One of the most crucial cave diving principles is to make yourself aware of the current conditions of the cave diving site before beginning your adventure. As we will see in today's narrative, failing to take this into consideration may result in grave danger. One of the more unsettling cave stories we've explored is the one in this story. Manatee Springs has a 9,000-year history. The Tamuqua Indians were Manatee Springs' first inhabitants. A Tamuqua Indian settlement covered the entire picnic area. The Suwannee River provided the Tamuquans with a method of transportation and access to fresh water, so they chose this location because of that. Bartram gave the spring its name after observing a manatee carcass on its coast. Manatees are large, entirely aquatic creatures. They are also known as sea cows and are mostly herbivorous marine mammals. Between 1835 and 1842, Major General Andrew Jackson led an assault known as the Manatee Springs. While the remaining Seminole Indians were forced to flee Florida, many of them were slaughtered. Farmers later settled in the area where they grew their crops and gathered springtime timber. Following the tragedy at Manatee Springs, the spring was sold to the state, and Manatee Springs was born in 1954. It is the longest spring run running directly into the Suwannee River and one of Florida's first magnitude springs. Florida's Manatee Springs State Park is situated along US-19 on State Road 320, about six miles from Chiefland. Manatee Springs State Park is a fantastic spot to enjoy yourself and have fun. Biking, boating, camping, fishing, hiking, scuba diving, and wildlife viewing are just a few of the activities available. The Suwannee River's decreased aquatic plant life due to tannic acid's darkening effects makes the spring an excellent habitat for the West Indian manatee, after whom the spring was named. Being herbivores, manatees relocated to Manatee Springs so they could find food and rest after traveling 23 miles from the Gulf. Along with manatees, Manatee Springs also attracts a sizable population of American black vultures in the winter. These vultures are not hostile, and they have no fear of the visitors to the park. Due to strong currents, the Manatee Springs cave system is not one of the more well-liked cave diving locations in Florida. It can impair visibility and make diving challenging. However, when other cave diving sites are at their worst, Manatee Springs has the ideal circumstances. For instance, the visibility in the Manatee Cave system actually increases when the Suwannee River floods. In Manatee Springs, there are a lot of sinkhole ponds. In contrast to other cave systems, this one's main entrance is difficult to access since the strong stream makes it too constrained. You must visit the Catfish Hotel in order to access this cave network. This sinkhole offers a sizable window onto the cave's side. You must turn right and follow the main upstream route from the Catfish Hotel. The Catfish Cave System's uppermost levels reach a depth of about 90 feet. Along the way, there are further openings, including Sue's Sink and the Freedman's Sink. Divers always enter one cave and exit it through another. This is known as caving. Years ago, cave divers would frequently follow the Catfish Hotel and exit through the main fountain of Manatee Springs, a perilous trip in the strong flow. The tunnels next to the main entrance started to collapse recently. The holes were smaller as a result, making it riskier to pass out through them. Divers were advised not to navigate these channels any longer by diving professionals. Additionally, the significant rainfall in November 2019 made the flowing water much stronger than it was before, making the passage even riskier to plunge into. Therefore, it is currently strongly advised against turning left from the Catfish Hotel since the very strong current makes it quite difficult to turn around. Because of an obstruction, it is exceedingly risky to try to go to the main entrance of the cave system. A 28-year-old woman embarked on a cave diving trip at Manatee Springs. Certified cave divers have perished while doing this. She was originally from China. On November 24, 2019, Zhao and three other people left China for Florida with the intention of scuba diving. The two teams of freshly qualified cave divers with a combined total of around 11 hours of cave diving experience were formed by the four cave divers. The teams were commanded by Wan, the group's most seasoned diver and a cave diving instructor. Many years prior, he had dove into Manatee Springs. He had traveled three times from the Catfish Hotel to the exit towards Manatee Springs. He wasn't familiar with the present state of Manatee Springs and the other bodies of water because he hadn't been there recently. The way things were before has changed. The cave is now far more dangerous than it was during those earlier years of his travels. But regrettably, they didn't ask about the local situation at the time. They followed their old way of thinking. If you haven't been to a cave in a while, you should inquire about its current state of affairs. It's possible that things aren't quite the same as they formerly were. Ask questions before starting your adventure or at the very least when you arrive at the cave site to ensure your safety. The two dive teams intended to leave the cave system and enter Manatee Springs downstream. The first team, Wang and Chen, used their dive propulsion vehicles and Re brothers to enter the Catfish Hotel scooters. 
After pushing through Friedman's sink and against the water current upstream, they linked the main rope and turned around to join the second team. This dive was done to inspect the Friedman exit and the route ropes for damage. Although they admitted that the visibility was poor, it was kept within a certain range, so they opted to move on because there was no danger of going beyond their limits. The effort took 35 minutes, and they reached the top at roughly 1,600 feet. They next climbed to a height of 1,700 feet, checked the conditions at the Friedman exit, and descended the first EAN-32 stage. Nitrox with enriched air is known as EAN-32. It is used to lessen the possibility of experiencing decompression symptoms. After an hour, the second crew, Zhao and Fu, used LP-95 back-mounted twin cylinders to access the cave system through the Catfish Hotel. After a brief solo dive, they rejoined the first team approximately 500 feet from the exit. The two teams would then proceed downstream from their meeting place by using the Manatee Springs exit. When the two teams finally came face to face, they assessed their air volumes and decided to move forward as planned with both teams. They reached the knot's conclusion after five minutes. According to Wan, who claimed to have visited there three times, the light and shadow of the exit could be seen at this point. However, the exit was completely dark due to low visibility. They connected to the main line using a jump reel because they couldn't see the exit. The depth was 50 feet at that point. They ascended the slope for around 6 feet, during which time the current greatly grew. The current at the top was too powerful for them to handle, pushing Wine up against a wall. He tried to hold on to a stone to keep himself in place, but failed. His mask and rib rather were torn apart by the powerful water. He lost consciousness after 10 seconds due to choking and was unable to find his teammates. He started to advance down the rock wall, in the direction of the light he saw beaming from outside the cave when he looked up. He was washed out of the cave right away by the swift tide of the water. Wang attempted to enter the cave again after noticing that no one else emerged to save the others from the powerful current. Then he noticed light signals coming from the second team, Zhao and Fu, indicating that they were requesting assistance. But concurrently, the Chen, first team became impaled in a larger main hole. When Wang let Chen go after failing to drag him up against the stream, Chen was driven into shallow water. Wang observed that Fu had also been forced from the cave by the powerful current. Fu was alert, but disorganized. Wang didn't check on Fu's health before entering the cave because he still had two comrades stuck there. Although Chen's regulator was still in his mouth, Wang could see that he had lost consciousness and was drifting along with the river. He also noticed that Zhu's regulator was no longer in her mouth. The rocks tightened around Chen's scooter and light head. Wan claimed that in order to approach Zhao, he had to first push Chen out of the way. In order to get freedom, Wang severed the scooter and light head, and after doing so, he was immediately thrown outside the cave. Wang went back to assist Zhao, hoping that by this time someone would have assisted his teammates, Fu and Chen, outside the cave. Unfortunately, the powerful current prevented him from getting close to her. Zhu's right hand and head were impaled by a tiny opening. Sadly, she was unable to fit through this tiny opening. A massive flood of water continued to spew out as Wang gripped her palm. He made the decision to head back to the surface at this point after realizing he had lost Zhou and becoming concerned about Chen's health. When they discovered Chen downstream, he was severely disoriented but was able to breathe once more. They were concerned, though, that he might have developed water in his lungs as a result of a protracted drowning. As soon as they'd brought him ashore, they alerted the rescue services and dialed the police. After Chen came ashore, Wang once more attempted to drag Zhu back to the surface, but was unsuccessful for 10 minutes due to the force of the incoming water at the cave's entrance. Due to his health at the time, he was unable to enter the cave. They had no choice but to wait for help. Fu raced to the park duty station to seek assistance in the interim. After waiting for around 20 minutes, an ambulance came to take Chen to the hospital for treatment. After an hour, the rescue crews arrived. After an hour, the contractors arrived. That night, the cave rescue team made three efforts to recover equipment before giving up owing to an overwhelming water flow. The next day was spent with more rescue and recovery efforts. Her body was hooked by the rocks inside the cave, and they were unable to remove it. As a result, they were forced to move it against their will, and the pebbles tore it apart. This developed into another cave opening. Jub's buoyancy bladder was pierced with permission to stop the water from draining the body. They took the body to the surface and brought it to the local police station. Following the incident, the main line from Manatee Springs to the Catfish Hotel was taken out of service. In addition, a warning sign was put up there to protect other divers from injury. It is not recommended to enter or leave Manatee Springs through the Catfish Hotel. You are highly encouraged to use other routes. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you saw, please hit the bell symbol to be notified when we upload another thrilling cave diving adventure. Consider subscribing to our channel and click the like button.